Welcome, everyone. My name is Kylie Minson. I'm a marketing associate here at Inflow CX. Um, thank you for joining our webinar today. We are going to be talking about, uh, or we're going to be doing a Genesis admin training going over external tags versus or flow outcomes. Quick uh, housekeeping items. Um, we do have some, or another webinar coming up for the month of June, happening next Thursday, same time, 10 a.m. Pacific, how automation and AI can enhance your CX ecosystem. So head on over to our website if that sounds like something you might be interested in to read more about what we're going to be discussing and to sign up. And so with that, um, just what we're going to be going over about today, um, we're going to have a quick uh, little intro about Inflow in case this is your first time joining us, and then I'll hand it over to Richard Dixon to go over the meat of the webinar. We'll have a Q&A session at the end, but if you have any questions that come up throughout the webinar, please drop them either in the chat or in the Q&A option, um, and we can hit on them during the webinar as well. And then lastly, we'll have a contact us page in case you need it or in case you want to get in touch. So who is Inflow CX? So Inflow CX, we are here to help you evolve your contact center technology and operations to deliver unparalleled experiences for your customers. And so we do that by helping organizations evaluate, deploy, and optimize their customer engagement technology and strategy. And a few of the ways we do that is, you know, by providing a vendor neutral approach to these technology evaluations, BPO, labor strategies, operational effectiveness. Um, we help you make data driven decisions utilizing ROI and TCO modeling. Um, and our expertise spans across the core CCAS products as well as into AI, CX, UC, WFO, BPO, automation analytics. Honestly, if you have a question about anything, we are we're the ones that can help you through it. So we provide high touch implementation um, and managed services as well. And this is just a sampling of some of the customers that we work with. As you can see, we work with some really um, big organizations um, to help innovate their customer experience. There is no vertical that we um, can't work in. Um, as you can see, it ranges from tech retail all the way to um, finance and insurance and healthcare. Um, so no matter which industry or vertical you're in, we are here to help. And this is just some of the, or just this is just a sampling of some of the partners that we work with. As you can see, there are a lot of players in the game. And so we're here to help you narrow it down to find the best fit for your contact center. Like I said, this is just a sampling of the partnerships that we have. You know, there's plenty more. Um, so, yeah. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Richard. All right, so we're going to go over Genesis admin training with external tags versus flow outcomes. They're both very similar, and they both offer a lot of the same functionality. So we'll dive into the next slide here. So to add a flow outcome, you do need a couple prerequisites. Under the architect, you'll need uh, flow outcome, edit, search, and view parameters. Uh, kind of what this is used for is for an administrator or contact center managers to use the flow outcomes to gather data about self-service success. So this allows me to kind of view what somebody chooses when they're going through a menu or doing a, a choice since we kind of prefer making a choice versus a menu. It makes, makes things a little bit easier as far as tracking goes and visuality uh, with a flow. Uh, this information helps us to determine how well uh, the architect flow services with the customer interaction. These kind of include uh, the total number of interactions that uh, have a self-start operation, the number and percentage of interactions that fail within the self-service operation, the number and percentage of interactions that successfully complete in the self-service operation and the length of time that successful operations spent in the self-service operation. Uh, however, this is something to remember with a flow outcome. It is not measurable for analytics within an NQ flow. So once they make it into the NQ portion where they're, they're waiting on hold in that queue, uh, if there's any self-service actions that are in there, we're not able to track that. Uh, another benefit of the flow outcome would be being able to kind of track uh, for for troubleshooting to see what path something went down to make sure that the the stuff that you set up in the flow is actually flowing the way that you would like. To be able to view a flow outcome, uh, these are all the uh, permissions that you'll need. So it's going to be the analytics data export all, analytics flow aggregate view, 
aggregate, uh, or sorry, architect uh, flow search, architect flow view, architect flow outcome view. Uh, there's also the, uh, there's some limits to it. So for both the flow outcome and flow outcome milestones, uh, the organization can include up to 1000 flow milestones. Uh, you can edit and name the description. So you can uh, also delete a flow, uh, the milestones, um, delete a flow milestone. And an organization can include up to 100 flow outcomes. So you can only have 100 flow outcomes in there. So there is a limit to that. Uh, you can edit the name and description of a flow outcome, but you cannot delete it uh, because of those limitations. Best practice recommends that you uh, carefully consider flow outcomes before you create and use them. Uh, so that, that's one thing to remember. And then and an architect, only the last 20 milestones per outcome and the last 100 milestones for uh, flow are going to be reported into an analytics. And then to add a flow outcome, we're going to follow these steps. So we're going to start off. We're going to be in our admin portion of it. And then we're going to type in flow. So when you're setting up a flow outcome, you do have to build it out first. It is not something that you can build live within a flow. You do have to create an outcome ahead of time. So it's as simple as clicking the plus over here, giving it a name. And you can give it a description. And then once you save it, you'll get the success over here, and then it'll be available for choice. From there, we'll need to go into a flow to be able to add it. So we'll take this flow that I already have in place from our previous demos. And we have a choice here to be able to go between uh, four options here. And a way for me to track which option that it hit is to go under the case, go here, go into flow, and then we can do set flow outcome. And then we'll need to choose the flow outcome that we want. So in this case, we're gonna do webinar, enter value, we're gonna do success, because it's just looking for a success or failure in there. And then, then we'll be able to evaluate upon that. So once somebody calls in after this has been saved, I can then go back into a uh, interaction or into the Q analytics to be able to search for that flow outcome to be able to see if somebody actually chose case one. Uh, especially this, this would apply, let's say you have a singular queue, but they have two different options and they both wind up going to the same queue. So if I wanna find out if they're, let's say they chose the VIP option and that was case number one, they chose one, I can now search and, and be able to tell how many times somebody chose VIP as opposed to uh, just knowing that somebody went into that, that queue. So we can see how many times somebody hit the queue since they both route to the same location, that'll make it a little bit harder to be able to determine which path did they really take, even though all the same agents are in there and all the skill sets are the same, we just wanna know which path they chose. Another option, and this is something that I tend to use a little bit more is because I can do it on a fly. And this is going to be setting not a flow outcome, it's gonna to be to set an external. Uh, let me find it in here. Set an external tag that's going to be by data action. So in this case, we can do this on the fly. And this works especially well with troubleshooting when we're trying to make sure that when they said, hey, I've been hitting one, and it, it's giving me choice two every time. And we can validate that by adding these external tags in here. So the name of the external tag, you can name it whatever you want. And for the value, this could be up to 36 characters long, and you'll want to type in what option that they chose here. So for example, this is going to be a case two, so I'm going to type in two. That way I know once this flows in that they chose case two. Uh, in this case, I'm not worried about a success or failure as far as choosing case two, because once it makes it there, it's going to find out whether it makes it, it's going to all go to the same spot. So for a troubleshooting, um, option, this works really well because you don't have to build out a flow outcome ahead of time. And you can also use this in a NQ flow, which you're not able to do with the flow outcome variable. So having this option for troubleshooting is excellent. 
So let's save this and publish. And then we're going to go back and the architect, we're going to go into routing and we're going to route a call over to this. Actually, we need to go back into admin. Let me get the one that I have admin open in. All right, so we're going to reroute the call over here. I'm going to make a quick call to it. That way you can see how it actually looks once we get to those options and how it is different between the two options here. So give me a moment while I dial it. Three, four, six, 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 three, three, two. Oop, dialed the wrong number. Three one three four six 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 three two. In this case, I'm going to choose option one. All right. And let's see if we can find that under the performance workspace and be able to see that call. That way you can see how the flow outcome variable actually shows. So it's not going to show up under uh, participant data in here. So it's going to go back into the interaction here. And this gives me the ability to search for it. So I'm going to hit the plus mark over here. We're going to go to outcome. Outcome success. Uh, see so your outcome failures is not showing it currently. And successful outcomes. Because then it's stay on the call long enough to show it, but you would go under here to be able to do the outcome and then it would report it right here with what outcome was chosen. Let's try the number again. We'll do it a little different. We'll see if I can get through it and then do an option two in this case. And then we'll look at the external tag. I guess it's not registering yet in this case, but for the external tag there, it would indicate uh, when it is properly loading. It might be a little bit too quick for the system to grab it right now. And it also doesn't display it here either. But under the interactions, when we're looking at it, it gives us the ability to, when it is properly working in this case, it will display when you choose that external tag, it'll display what that tag is. That way we can actually see um, what path it chose throughout the system. That way, when you have a large tree and you're having some failures and you're trying to track down exactly where it is, you can add a bunch of external tags throughout the, the entire flow to be able to, to pinpoint and track along the entire path of that flow to be able to see which part 
was successful. Did it hit point A? Did it hit point B? Did it hit point C? And if it didn't, you can go back and, and identify that area to be able to try to track down what the culprit of the issue is when you're trying to troubleshoot. It works really well for that, especially when it goes to the NQ flow. That's where the external tag really shines to allow you to be able to see that versus the um, flow outcome variable, which isn't trackable when it comes to the uh, NQ flow portion of it. Is there any questions offhand? Doesn't look to be any questions at this time. So for the external tag, just to give you a little bit more information, to use the external tag, you can set the, uh, the action again to associate interactions with Genesis Cloud for your records, for your organization, customer relationship, uh, the system of records. Uh, this feature allows you to attach internal tag to the interactions itself, and then retrieve the record associated with a unique tag um, historically. You can search for a filter like I was showing you uh, based upon the tag with interactions, uh, interaction view, and detail view, and queue interactions uh, view detail, and schedule callbacks view. So there's a a lot of options in there. Uh, as far as external tag, uh, external tag data is not available for web chat interactions. So that's something that, that's not possible in there. And if you update the tag after the conversation ends, the updated tag will not appear on any uh, subsequent uh, metrics for that. Okay. Uh, as far as the taking the both action blocks there, uh, I would have to double check into that. Uh, I think that's a little bit newer than what I'm used. I haven't used the flow um, outcome for a little while as far as initializing it, because I have switched over to the external tag just because there is a limit of a 100. Uh, so I don't use it as often. So that, that seems to be a little bit newer functionality there. Um, but thank you for that information, Patrick. But typically, um, we're, we're using the external tag now for troubleshooting because I work on the break fix side. So that's primarily where I use that at to help troubleshoot what's going on with your flow to, to figure out um, where something might be breaking. Right. Any other questions or comments? All right, well, if you have any other further questions that do come up after this uh, that uh, you weren't able to think of right now, you can always get in touch with us. This is our support line and, and there'll be somebody available to help you out. Awesome, thank you so much, Richard. Um, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you. Again, if you have any questions, definitely get in touch. And with that, have a great rest of your day. Bye everyone.